We're fishing. We're going fishing. We're catching white fish today. Maybe some Lakers. So stay tuned. Cause we're going fishing. <laughs> Good rock. Pretty good rock down there. Yeah. Oh, spot one. Sat here for about 25 minutes. Had one mark. Wasn't, you know, wasn't active, so run move. Off to the next spot. It's gonna be a grind today. Spot number two. We're setting up in 20 feet of water. A little bit shallower than where we were, where we were at. I can't even talk. It is so cold. And the worst part is it's bare ice. <sighs> brutal, brutal conditions. But other than that, sitting in 20 feet of water, I just saw a fish kind of mosey on by. I'm on a really big rock pile right now. I might have to slide out maybe to my left a bit just to be on that more flat. But the good thing is I don't really have a dead zone. So it's pretty good. I can see my lures all the time, which is also a bonus. But other than that, we'll give it a couple minutes here. We'll give it 15, 20 minutes if we don't see a fish. We're gonna be buzzing around again. That's the name of the game out here. I mean, if you're not marking a fish, you best be moving. So, we'll keep you posted. All right, spot number, I lost count. Spot number X. We're good, and we're good. Okay. It's a grind, trying to get away from the crowds. It's a tough bite. We only got one. Sometimes, that's how it goes. No dice. On to the next. Ah. What a grind. What a grind. 10 minutes and we out. 2,000 years later. Isn't it trying to, oh, here comes another one. I'm on this time. Oh, that guy smashed it. That guy smashed it. That was a freaking crazy hit. That was a crazy hit. Check this out, guys. So, I mean, that's on the new Menace. Uh, there's a new jig out here on Lake Simcoe. It's called the Menace. By all means, I'm not sponsored. Like I said, I'm willing to use any lure. You know, it's that's the fun in fishing, I think, is that every lure you get to try out, and if it works better for you, you, you use it, right? This lure, I'm gonna do a little pro and con on both lures, um, the Meigs and this menace that I feel that this kind of lure has its benefits for the most part. That's awesome. Just set up in 20 feet of water. We got our first whitey. It's been a drought for like two weeks. So I'm pretty pumped. This is going to be on the frying pan because I'm running low on, uh, on loins. But nonetheless, guys, that is a beautiful whitefish. And it smoked the menace. So needless to say, it does work. <laughs> so we're going to bonk this guy and uh, we're going to get back on there. This is a prototype, so it's the paint is actually coming off on this one. Uh, the new ones are actually clear coated. However, the cool thing I like about this lure is that it has a smaller hook. So that hook right here is actually a Gamma Gatsu hook. And I don't know if you could see that. So it's a really stout, really strong hook. I mean, there's no bend really in that hook. And the cool thing that I really like about this lure that kind of supersedes, you know, a lot of other ones that I've been using is that when you put that knot back, look how stout that sits. That is sitting naturally. Look how high that hook is sitting. So when you're in that silt, or if you're in that kind of high contour of rock, and you drop this, it's almost straight up and down. And uh, those whiteys are able to just grab it with the littlest effort. Um, and the cool thing is you could rip this. Like I've put it to the test where I've ripped it and the knot does not move. And a really big pro, I would say, on why this lure, I've kind of been using it a lot more. Sometimes it's just a little bit of a different presentation. So we'll get back down there and we'll see if we can catch some more fish anyways. just got set up 
I'm running a dropper rig, so I got my, uh, my bottle at the bottom. And then that top hook with that impact bait, this guy came flying in from the top and just absolutely smoked it. So I wasn't recording with my big camera because I literally just dropped it before my sonar got down. And then I dropped my sonar in and I was like, oh, smokes, there's a fish flying in. That's two. Now let's just wait it out. The fish are here. Let's see if we can get them. I moved like 20 times today. I'm not kidding. I literally did a circle around this entire lake area and finally we hooked into some fish geez what a joke it's been a grind i guess we're gonna post up here so that thing came flying in and just didn't think twice for that top hook just smoked it i'm running a really really high rig right now like small size six owner hook with an impact bait tiny tiny little bait like look at that that's mimicking what they're kind of eating. And then literally two feet below, I got the vibrato just to call them in. So super long rig. I'm keeping the vibrato on the bottom. They're coming in really high up. And when they're coming up that high, I'm noticing that they're eating that high hook every single time. I knew it too. I knew I should have put my big camera down. I was like, you know what? I just set up. I'm not gonna set up the big camera. <laughs> and go figure. Oh gosh, that's how it always is. Sometimes you gotta have like a GoPro just recording the whole time, or else you're just not catching it. But they're here, so let's get back at it. He's like circling on it. Right on it. Exposed on it. Oh, that guy lifted it hard. Oh, my drag is just gone. So that's a good fish. Oh, I got no drag whatsoever. Uh oh, uh oh. What do we got here? Is this a whitey or a laker? Mmm, mmm, mmm. We might have a laker here. A laker? This is a big fish, guys. I'm a little nervous because I haven't been doing too well in the past couple weeks. And, uh, you know, when you hook a fish like this after a while, you really, you really just get r nervous. Oh, gosh. This ice down there is really just not good just going for a run again just breathe 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 relax i get so nervous up oh come on come on come on come up come up come up come up come up, come up. no get your head up got her got, it? got her yes yes Damn, what a beauty. Look how he ate that new Menace jig. Oh my gosh, right in the nose. Beautiful. Just landed this beautiful lake trout. Damn, it's been a laker year actually, shallow for me. I've been catching a few lakers shallow, but that thing absolutely came in and just smoked that new Menace jig. We're gonna get a release on this fish. But the... And there it goes. Yeah. Finally, all that work, yeah. man. Nice fish. All that Beautiful. work. Healthy fish. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's go. This new Menace jig that Fatal Forest Alfred as Tom came out, you see how high that thing sits? So when that when that fish comes and you try to work it like a Meigs, you know, like you get a bounce, it kind of goes all over the place. So the very way to use it is you hit bottom and like just a subtle like a subtle lift you see how how little i'm lifting it and it's dancing if you lift that too much then it might not work as properly you almost want it to just kind of you know lift itself up and you almost don't even want to jig it and what you'll feel is your line will go slack or because that knot sits so far back on that lure okay i'm trying to get it to focus 
Okay, because that knot sits so far back on that lure, you can see how it sits. When they grab the back of that lure, you act, their mouth actually hits the line and it's a different hit. It, you know, a lot of people will think that it's a lift like the Meeks, but in, in real sense, the bite on this lure is an actual thunk. It's a different bite because their mouths are hitting the back of that line and it sends a vibration up your rod. So it's a total different bite than what we're like what I'm used to with the Meeks. And I mean, both have their pros and cons. This lure, if you're not gentle with it, you probably won't catch. Um, you really gotta dial in that like super like subtle lift. Like it's super, here we go. We got one on the bottom right now. But like you can see, like I'm barely even touching this rod. Barely gotta move that rod tip. If you move it too much, you're not gonna catch them. Simple as that. Both have their pros and cons. One thing I don't like about the Meigs, okay, and that, you know, sensing that I've caught tons of fish on it, tons, but because that knot doesn't sit back and the way you could rip it and it doesn't sit far back, you're not getting that full a bite from it. See, like this is when the knot is full back and it sits pretty high when you can get it to go to a certain point. It sits pretty high. You'll catch them like that, no problem. But when you rip it a couple times and that knot kind of settles out to the front, you know, you can see how flat that lure becomes. You can see how really low that lure becomes. And to get that bite, you gotta be really kind of pounding it. Now, you see how the Meigs, you can kind of give it a good bounce. I love that. I love how you can give this lure a good little thunk and it doesn't twist, it doesn't bounce, it doesn't turn. You can give it a good thunk and it doesn't really move as much on its radius. It kind of just gives it that same bite the whole time. I love to work it like this. You know, a lot of guys like to work it really subtle, like where it's like a little lift. I like to give it a good thunk, right? However, the Menace, on the other hand, likes to twirl and bounce and kind of do all these weird dances if you give it that thunk. But on the other hand, if you're looking at a lure that has a more finesse presentation, if you are a finesse fisherman and you really have a soft feel for that rod and you can move it so ever slightly, the Menace is the lure for you, without a doubt. You will up your chances, you'll catch way more fish, Without a doubt, because the way it sits so high, you, that lure, that fish just naturally will grab it a lot better. But if you like to thunk it at a high rate and you like to give it that little bit of a thunk, 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 like how I usually like to work it, the Meigs is going to be the lure for you. You just got to find what fits your presentation style, what you enjoy using. It's not about what lures better. No lure is better than another. I mean, you'll have guys that will catch 100 fish on the Menace, you'll have 100 guys catch a fish on the Meigs, or whatever other lure they're using. Every lure has its pros, every lure has its cons. I'm just basically bringing out what I truly think about both lures. Caught that lake trout on the, on the Menace, that's the first lake trout I ever caught on it. Find what works for you. If you're having trouble catching on the Meigs, try the Menace. I mean, uh, the Menace definitely has a for sure bite. Like, you can definitely feel that bite on the Menace because it sits so stout. But if you work it too much, you won't catch. It's too in their face and it bounces around like crazy. So give it a shout. Both lures will be in the description. If you want to try out new lures, go by all means. I'm, I'm open to everything. I use everything out there. Whatever can catch me fish, I'm using. So hopefully you guys got a little tip out of this. I mean, I might've been rambling a lot. I'm going to try to edit out a lot of it. But other than that, let's get back out there. Let's catch some more fish. Seems like they're coming around. So. Stay fishy, stay frosty. Five minutes later. I know, but they don't know we're together. Oh. We'll pass up the fish oh. This guy's coming in. Another Laker. Yeah, got him. Yeah. Oh gosh, big hand shakes. Oh gosh, what is it? Oh wow, that's a big white. <laughs> got him. Oh, hook just came out. Whew. I don't know. But check it out. Another nice little white fish. Beautiful. We're gonna get a release on this fish. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy, 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 easy. Gosh, why do they gotta be so difficult? Why? Why do they gotta be so difficult for me, you know? I'm just trying to release you, man. And they're slapping me in the face and all. What is up, everybody? So check it out. Um, it's about midday now. Uh, we've been fishing for a while now. I, I haven't moved, well, I shouldn't say, I moved the boat like 15 times a day. It was just 
it was it was a tough bite. It was tough to find these fish. Finally, we came across these fish. We got a couple whiteies, but I want to just kind of show you guys what what's been kind of guiding our movement uh, or where we're choosing or when we're choosing to stay. So basically, there's these apps online that show you your know, barometric pressure. Um, there's fishing apps that show your majors and your minors. Some people may not believe in them, and we kind of judge the way we move based on these charts. So you can actually see here today when the loop goes down to the bottom that's a really low feed time so you can see where the line kind of lines up now that's a major feed time which means it's really good so it's about on the rise and uh, usually when we see these major feed times we don't really move we usually put, like stay put we wait out that feed time because believe it or not with these whitefish, we've actually caught a lot more fish during these major feed times. If you're moving all day trying to find these fish, find these fish, find these fish, sometimes on these major areas, they end up coming through here and there, and you can miss two, three fish uh, to top your day off, right? That's what we kind of go by. You know, when we see that line, that long line, kind of go in that red zone, that those low areas where it kind of dips down. You see those low dips, low dips? When we see our, that line kind of hit that low zone, then we'll choose to pick, you know, little areas off throughout the day. We'll maybe one fish here, one fish there. But usually the go-to area that you're most confident fishing in is the area you're gonna wanna be in when you see these major feed times. Some people may think it's a bunch of, you know, jabloni. I thought it was a bunch of jabloni too. The fish have been coming, they've been going, they've been coming, they've been going. And then we'll notice that dead time. Everyone notices that <laughs> And then it's like, where did you go? Where did you go? Fish, are you here? Hello. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Um, I can't wait to get back out here. I got some awesome stuff coming out for you guys for Lake Trout um, before March 15 closer. We have a week and a bit left till the season closes. So I'm gonna try to pump out as many videos as I can. Well, probably one or two videos as I can. And uh, you know, I appreciate everything you guys have done for me and the support you guys have given me. Um, and all those who I've met on the ice throughout the season and you know everyone that's encountered me It's a blast. I, I appreciate talking to all you guys and you know you, you learn something every day So thank you guys for proving that fishing is such a great community and uh, We'll catch you on the water next time